Christ is with you. And also with you. There was no celebration in the temple that night. The wheel of government moved on and disturbed. The town of Bethlehem slept much as any other night. The rich, powerful, religious, and pious remained unaware. And if you will join me in prayer. Lord, it is so easy for us to miss completely what you are doing, what you are about. We get distracted by shiny things. We get caught up in festivities. We get trapped in the trappings of the season without really pondering its meaning. We talk about a baby in danger, shepherds on the hillside, and angels heralding Jesus' birth. Somehow, we miss that you have come into our very midst born of the poor and unknown, heralded to people deemed unworthy, and giving little thought to halls of power we think to be so important. Renew your presence in our lives, we pray. Be born again in us that we might carry your message of redemption, reconciliation, grace, and love to so many who live in the forgotten valleys of society. May we take up the cry of those heavenly messengers that you have come even for those we too often ignore and pass by without a single thought. May we celebrate you as you are. Amen. And we have a praise melody. Um, it is in your hymnal, but in, it's all in the green. And we will start with 267 verses 1 and 5. 253 verses 1 and 273 verses 1 and 3.
joys and concerns do you have to share at this time? Pray for Pam and Dave as uh, she is struggling with uh, pulmonary embolism as on top of some other infections that they discovered. Okay, come. Pray for Matt with some career issues he's going through. Bill? My daughter, Amy, who was visiting us for Christmas, and the day before she came, broke her ankle. But on top of it, she did walk through the airport, cast it on. Come. What? <clears throat> Pray for Amy, who broke her ankle as she was coming to visit uh, no, at work. Still came. still came and visited, walking on casting in the airport. Okay. Thanks for her being here and pray for her restoration. Gina? Chris, if we can just remember this is especially cold weather. Those who are homeless and don't really have a warm place of their own to sleep and stay, let's keep them Prayers. prayers for those who are without <clears throat> shelter in this time of very cold, not only here, but throughout the U.S. Others? Good to have Elaine on Zoom with us. Let's turn to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Father, we come to you on this day in which we celebrate your coming to us, bringing you some of our concerns for loved ones and friends around us. We pray for Pam and her family, for Matt as he makes decisions and looks for your guidance in questions of career, for Amy and her recovery, for those around us who do not have warm quarters in which to hide away from the cold weather around us. We play, pray for Gerald, for Ladale, for Andy, for so many others that we have not mentioned, but who are near and dear to us, who are struggling with various concerns. We place them before you, knowing that your love and care far exceeds our own. We recall those words by which Jesus taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
never truly our own. They were yours to begin with, and we return the portion to you of all that you have blessed us with. That we might use these to advance your kingdom, your reign on earth, as we proclaim Jesus as the Christ, the risen one, who came to live among us in lowly state, to help us understand that all are worthy in your grace, in your love. So grant that we might honor you in all of our duties. For in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> I hope you will join me on number 8AD in the blue hymnal for our affirmation of faith, <laughs> number 8AD. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, the being and the We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ. The only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God's life from light, true God and his promise, the God and God's made, of one being with the Father, through him of all things for me, for us and for our salvation, which he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and our Redeemer, and he came through the truth. For our first day, he was crucified and divine. He suffered and the spirit. On the third day, he rose to him in accordance with the scripture. He ascended his power, and he is seated at the right hand of God. He will come again to work to judge the living and the dead. And to speak of all that we We believe in the Holy Spirit. The Lord is the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and life. Today's text comes from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 14. Luke chapter 2, 1 through 14. Hear the words of the gospel. In those days, a decree went out from the emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then a messenger of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the messenger said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. 
And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you. Vera, you don't feel good? Mm. Yeah, but you didn't need the time and energy. You did not eat. It goes into wrapping the, the gifts that we place under the tree. You didn't need it. How much uh, do we, how much effort do we spend on paper that we're going to throw away immediately? Slowly, but you don't Several listen. Several decades ago, when I put I, it in the uh, fridge, then you then I'm spinning Christmas with with my family. Um, we had tried to disguise my grandmother's gift, and my aunts and uncles had never been able to keep it a secret from her what she was getting. So they went to marvelous inventions, figuring out how in the world to disguise her gift as they wrapped it. So some of us grandkids got the idea that we should do that with our giving too. So we would find multiple ways to enclose a gift box within a gift box within a gift box within a gift box that all had to be opened until the recipient finally figured out what it was they were receiving. Rather differently from that, uh, my own family uh, about 20 some years ago was given some money to get uh, gifts for our children and one gift in particular, we couldn't figure out how to wrap. It was a scooter, it was about four feet tall. So we ended up just get, taking the bag that that scooter came in and tying a bow around the top. And that was it. And from then on, that bag was used for gift after gift after gift after gift. Until today, we're more likely to grab a blanket and just wrap it around whatever we're giving someone and go get each gift individually and hand it out. Because the wrapping really doesn't matter. A beautifully wrapped gift is beautiful and I can appreciate it as much as the next person, but what we're really interested in is finding out what is this gift? Isn't the gift what is supposed to take center stage? It was an unremarkable birth in a very obscure setting. The child was born to poor young parents on a journey, likely in part to escape the gossip and side eye they were getting at home. There was no inn set up with an appropriate birthing room where the rest of the guests would not become ritually impure. Having a birth happened there. They could not have contact with birth fluids or so many other things related to the coming of a new life into the world. And so this couple went with his child to a different place, near where the animals were kept, and gave birth in the most humble of settings, where animals were cared for, possibly in a stranger's home, but definitely not in comfort. There was no fanfare at the palace, there were no throngs lining the streets to greet this new child and his parents. As far as Bethlehem and the rest of Judea was concerned, this was just one more peasant giving birth to one more mouth to feed, one more child who would be forced to pay taxes to Rome. No one was writing home about this birth. It was secluded kept hidden away from society. 
It was hidden among animals and given little thought to whomever might have been aware of this pregnancy and birth. No Christmas trees, no candy canes, no sleigh bells, no children playing in the snow, no carolers going around to sing songs of the season or the wonder of what God was in the midst of accomplishing. No decorations, no garlands of lights, no wreaths or bows were in evidence on that Judean night. Rather, mother, father, and child were tucked out of sight where no one should have gone looking for them or anything else that was special. They were not doing much celebration. They were just recovering from the ordeal of birthing a child in rude surroundings away from the comforts of home. It was not a feast day. There was nothing particularly special about the timing of this birth. We don't even know when it chanced to be, though it's more likely to have been August or July than December itself. Today is just a day we picked to celebrate this birth. Mostly to shift a population away from celebrating Saturnalia and other festivals and point the revelers to the birth of Jesus instead. Now that night fell much more in line with the Grinch style of Christmas. No stockings, no garlands, no bows, no ribbons. It was more like a secret mission unfolding as far as the world was concerned. This birth would have been just one more among a population struggling to survive under Roman oppression. And then Luke records for us that there was actually some fanfare, but it came from the most unexpected of quarters. Rather than the royal palace or the courts of the temple in Jerusalem, God announced this birth to a band of shepherds, keeping watch in the fields. That's probably the last place anyone would have been looking to hear God announce the birth of Messiah. God's messengers made themselves known to these lowly shepherds who as they came from the heavens, announced to them, telling them to go and greet this child born in Bethlehem, wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger of all places. The announcement takes us back to Mary's poem that Luke records in the previous chapter, a message of God interrupting the normal order of the world to elevate the lowly and ignoring those we consider worthy of our and God's attention. It was in that very light that Jesus was born and his birth was announced by God. The palace remained unaware. The temple courts, the Sanhedrin, were not visited by heralds of God. As far as Jerusalem was concerned, nothing special had taken place. Even the town of Bethlehem remained in its obscurity and oblivion of what God was doing in its very midst. It was only this handful of people to whom God's announcement was made. The shepherds left their flocks on the hillside, rushing to confirm what God's heavenly messengers had told them. They went to find this newborn child wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger, a feeding trough. There was no sign on the door, no flashing lights to illumine their way. No doubt they interrupted the sleep of many in their search for this newborn that had been laid in a manger. Most likely, no one paid them much mind 
as these shepherds actually lived in the fields with their animals. They were dirty and bedraggled. They were ritually unclean and did not regularly participate in the cultus of Judaism. Sure, the people depended on them to care for the sheep and goats, but the shepherds themselves were rather much like wait staff that we so easily ignore at a hotel or restaurant. They might be there to meet our needs, but rarely would we engage them in conversation. Whatever fuss or fanfare these filthy men made was easily brushed aside as unimportant news. Noise. White noise fading into the background to be ignored. It's not quite the picture I get from so many Christmas cantatas. Dramatic presentations. Even hymns we love to sing. We tend to focus on dressing up the occasion with all sorts of trappings that make us feel good, special, and festive. We focus on the wrappings of presents, poinsettias setting off our sanctuary, the tree and candles, proclaiming a message of much simpler, more basic. And we forget sometimes that there is something special going on, a deeper reason for us to rejoice. The trappings and wrappings of that night were much simpler, much more basic. They were rustic. They were unworthy of mention. They were a humble house, a trough for feeding animals, and some cloth to bundle up this newborn making his appearance in this world. We often seem to get that backwards. We spend a lot of time and attention on all the trappings of the season with little reflection on God's actual gift in Jesus. This incarnation, this God coming to earth in the most meager of settings. This is God arriving on the scene without fanfare, no trumpets blasting, no sleighs pulled by reindeer, no feasting by the populace in celebration of God's arrival. They did not even understand that this child in the manger was God in human flesh. These heavenly messengers didn't get quite that far in their proclaiming. The shepherds were full of hope that the message from on high would, was that he would be the Messiah and that this was real. It was something to celebrate. But who was going to believe their word about a vision of celestial beings playing heralds to them of all people. God coming to earth in human flesh is extraordinary. It's an event like no other. It is worthy of celebration. It is worthy of fanfare, of lights, and so much more. It's worthy of a deeper reflection on the message of redemption encased in this obscure night so long ago. The message is that God came down at Christmas. It is also that God came most specifically to people cut off, cast away to the margins of society as in Mary's prayer of praise. God has lifted up the lowly and sent the wealthy away empty. Because of God's great love and grace, God came to dwell among us in the meanest parts of earth. 
somewhere amid all the wrappings and trappings of our celebration, will we remember that most important message? Our holiday decor and festivities should never be given the place of what really matters. It's a message that God has found us all worthy of grace and favor. When all the wrappings and wrappings are gone, we are left with this gift. What are we unwrapping? You'll join us in our closing hymn, medley on the blue hymnals, number 234, verse 1 and 245. setting, and thus showing us by your example that we are also to go unto all with this message of your coming, your redemption, your grace. That is for all. Grant that we might carry this message to all parts of this world as we are transformed by your gift, that the world might be transformed as well. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.